single slit diffraction and diffraction grading is going to be the topic of this lesson in my new general physics playlist, which when complete will cover a full year of university algebra-based physics. Now earlier in this chapter we looked at Young's double slit experiment. We saw that light passing through two separate slits has a chance to interfere one with the other. But in this lesson we'll learn that light even passing through a single slit has the possibility of interfering with itself, so to speak. Uh, we'll also talk about diffraction gratings, where instead of just one slit or two slits, we're going to have many, many, many slits, uh, and there's characteristic interference patterns associated with that. My name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, if you're new to the channel, we've got comprehensive playlists for general chemistry, organic chemistry, general physics, and high school chemistry. And on chadsprep.com, you'll find premium master courses for the same that include study guides and a ton of practice. You'll also find comprehensive prep courses for the DAT, the MCAT, and the OAT. So we're going to start with single slit diffraction, where light passing through a single slit now has a chance to potentially interfere with itself. Now, keep in mind, uh, as light is passing through this lovely slit, it's going to spread out in all directions. That's properly what's called diffraction. So, but this light has a fixed finite width. So, and it's usually on the order of a fraction of a millimeter, and while that might seem small, if you compare that to the wavelength of light on the order of like 400 to 700 nanometers, it's actually rather large, and there's room for many, many, many light waves to be passing through all at different locations. And with many passing through and then spreading out in all directions, that's where there's a chance for interference. So, and what we're gonna kinda demonstrate this is we're first gonna kinda break up this slit into two regions here, the top half and the bottom half, and we're gonna pair up uh, light waves as they travel across the screen. And so I'm gonna take this top one right here, so, and travel to the location of what we're gonna determine is going to be a dark fringe in a little bit. So, and I'm gonna take another one halfway down the slit and have it travel to exactly the same location. I'm gonna pair those two up. And in similar fashion, I'm gonna take the second one from the top so and pair it up with this one. And then these two, and then these two. And by doing that, so the distance from where these light rays originate at the slit is actually a distance of A over two for any of the pairs that I would look at. Well, if you recall, we dealt with Young's double slit interference. So we said that the path difference was d sine theta, where d was defined as the distance between the slits because that was the distance between where the light rays were originating. Well, in the example we've given here, the distance between where the light rays that are originating that travel to the same location is not d, but now we've defined it as now a over two instead. And so this is the path difference. And if we want the condition for destructive interference, well, then we want this to equal some odd number of wavelengths. And specifically, I'm just going to start it off at one half lambda. So as the most basic, you know, half of a wavelength. And if this condition is met, we will indeed get destructive interference between every two pairs we get. And if we rearrange this just a little bit, so we get A sine theta equals lambda. Okay, so that's one scenario. Let's break this up a little further. Instead of splitting this up into two regions, so we always want to split it up into an even number of regions here for the case of argument. That way we can always pair up individual light waves, so to speak. But if we split this up into four regions now, so, and then instead of going halfway down, we just go a fourth way down. We'll pair those two up, we'll pair those two up, we'll pair those two up, and we'll pair those two up. So. And in such fashion, now all of a sudden, instead of having a distance between the ones we're pairing up of A over two, we'd have a distance of A over four. So, and the path, the difference in path length between the two light waves we're looking at would be A over four sine theta. And again, as long as that equals a multiple of lambda over two of one half lambda, maybe I should write that as one half lambda again, be consistent then that would be, again, the condition for destructive interference. And if we look at how this works out, then I'm gonna multiply both sides by four, and four over two is two, and we end up with A sine theta now equals two lambda. All right, now we could keep doing this, and again, as long as we keep breaking this up into an even number of regions, so instead of four regions, now we break it up into six regions. And if we did so, we'd get A sine theta equals three lambda. So break it up into eight regions, we'd get A sine theta equals four lambda. And ultimately what we've just seen then is that A sine theta is equal to any integer times lambda. And again, keeping in mind that this is for the dark 
fringes because we have met the condition of destructive interference. Now you look at this, you're like, but it equals m lambda, Chad. But again, yeah, the distance between uh, the original kind of situation we looked at was not a, but a over two. And that's why it looks kind of exactly like this should be constructed, but it is indeed destructive interference. We've just kind of laid the groundwork for it. And after that, it would be plug and chug. So we're gonna do one particular question with this and we'll just kind of make a little bit of room. The question we're gonna solve here says, the first order dark fringe for monochromatic light passing through a single slit of width 0.10 millimeters occurs at an angle theta equal 0.24 degrees. What is the wavelength of light? So in this case, we're given the slit width, we're given the angle, we're told the order is number one, and we can just solve for lambda. It's fairly straightforward plug and chug here. So I want to sure we get our units correct here. So A here is 0.1 millimeters, but in meters, that's going to be 0.1 times 10 to the negative 3 is usually how I would look at that. That's obviously not proper SI, but that's how I will plug it into my calculator here. So times the sine of 0 0.24 degrees all over 1. So we'll figure out what this is to 2 sig figs. Like I said, I will really plug this in as 0.1e to the negative 3 times the sine of 0.24 degrees. And it comes out to 4.188 times 10 to the negative 7, which in two sig figs would be 4.2 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. So which might also be given in this case as 420 nanometers kind of corresponds towards that violet end of the spectrum. So now we'll take a look at diffraction gratings. So and a diffraction grating ultimately has many, many, many slits that are a fixed distance d apart in this case. Uh, and ultimately you're then gonna have light passing through multiple slits, all traveling from multiple different slits to a common location and possibly resulting in interference. So let's kind of take a look at this. So let's say we've got light passing to a common point and let's just make this to this lovely point right here from that slit, from that slit, and from that slit, so on and so forth. And this gets complicated in a hurry, but we can reduce the problem significantly by just focusing on two adjacent slits. That's it, ignoring all the rest for just a second. Well, that would result back to just kind of Young's determination for the two slit experiment in which he said that D sine theta equals M lambda corresponding to the bright fringes. So, and we're gonna focus only on the bright fringes here, but that would be the requirement. Well, that would be true for these two slits or these two, or these two, or these two, or any two adjacent slits. And all of a sudden, you can kind of expand what you've done for any two adjacent slits. And if it applies to these two, and it applies to these two, then it applies to all three, and you can kind of just spread it out across the board. And all of a sudden, we've kind of derived a general formula, looking just like Young's double slit experiment result, uh, for the specifically bright fringes from a diffraction grating. So, uh, and the lines coming from a diffraction grating uh, are going to be equally spaced and of equal intensity, which is going to be a little bit different than what you see with single slit diffraction or with Young's double slit interference. So, uh, but based on where they're located, you can actually use them to calculate the wavelength of light that's passing through. And if you've got multiple wavelengths, then you'll end up with multiple first order and multiple second order and multiple third orders. And based on where they're located, you could calculate all of those, each of those wavelengths uh, through. And that's going to be what we're going to do in this next question. Question says, a diffraction grating has exactly 1,000 slits per centimeter. The first order bright fringe for monochromatic light occurs at theta equals 3.8 degrees. What is the wavelength of light? So in this case, we're given the angle theta for the first order bright fringe. We weren't given D directly, but we we're told that it's 1,000 slits per centimeter, which means the distance between any two adjacent slits would be one one thousandth of a centimeter, or you could look at that as one times 10 to the negative three centimeters, which would be the same as one times 10 to the negative five meters, since there are 100 centimeters in a meter. Cool, so I just convert it into meters, the SI unit for calculation. But in this case, once we solve for lambda, it's just gonna equal D sine theta over M which in our case was this one times 10 to the negative five meters 
times the sine, what was that? 3.8 degrees. All over the first order, so m equals one. And it's fairly straightforward, simple plug and chug here. So one e to the negative five times the sine of 3.8. In this case, we're gonna get 6.627 times 10 to the negative seven meters. Uh, and to two sig figs, that's gonna be 6.6 times 10 to the negative seven meters. Or again, you might commonly see this as 660 nanometers on a multiple choice test. That's all there is to it. If you have found this lesson helpful, consider giving it a like. Happy studying.